Hello and welcome to the NevilleResearch.com video. In the first part of this series, we looked at the inscription, at the copy of the sonnets at the University of Manchester, and compared it with Henry Neville's handwriting in general. And in this video, I want to compare it with the handwriting just in two letters that Henry Neville wrote. So we're not cherry picking from, you know, hundreds of letters written over a 20 year period. We're going to look at two letters that he wrote and compare the handwriting. So this first example is from 1600. And this letter is sort of his semi formal style. So it's not his most formal style and it's not his draft handwriting or his um even there's another another level of like semi-formal. So this is sort of uh, mid-formal and then there's a super formal style. So I'll show you what I mean as we go through this, but it's important to remember that Henry Neville could vary his handwriting. So you can't expect him to write the same thing every time the same way. Now, like we talked about, this word is commendations. There's uh, only one M and there's no I because there's an abbreviation mark on top. But these examples are a little bit di different. This is an R and it's recommendation. This is recommend and commandment. So they're slightly different words. But we can see some of the same characteristics. So, for instance, um, this AC and this AC are practically identical. Even the angle of this C the look, uh, and the A is slightly above the C, it, it's remarkably similar. This ND is formed the same way as this ND. This D is a little fatter and this is a little skinnier, but very similar. The E is different and this is Neville's more formal E. Now in this letter he writes the E two different ways, so this is different, but this M is remarkably similar. Every aspect of it, the angle of it, it's all just just right uh, and similar to this one. If we look uh, down here at this word, so this E is very similar to this E. It's a, like I said before, sometimes he tilts his E, sometimes he doesn't. This is tilted, but it's a very similar shape and, and uh, as this. And the connection with the E and the N here is also very similar. This is a little more tilted but this is an inscription after all up here, and he's writing a little more formally. The M's are perfect matches for what's up there. Um, and the D also is, you know, these are a little bit different shape than this, but the, uh, the you know, the line up here, the loop up here is a little bit different shape, but the Bottom part is exactly the same. The formation is the same. So these are very close. And we've shown you other examples that are even closer. But obviously this could be the same person's handwriting. The two um, is very close. It's very good. Um, Neville tended to curve the top of his two like this. Have a curve on top. But not always. So this example is almost identical. I mean this is a. This is a fabulous example, um, truly a fabulous example. But you can see here, just look at all these examples. He's varying it. He doesn't write always the same way, and it depends on the formality of the letter. But this is a very close match, and the rest of them are close matches too. They just happen to curve up. Um, so this is a very close match here. Now the my is a... All of these are, are good matches. Um, these are, maybe this one is the best one, looks the best. 
Um, this one looks good. This is a this is a part of a word, but you can see the Y is sort of a similar formation, a similar look to it. So this is very consistent with this handwriting. Uh, this is a little more carefully written, this M, but if you compare this M with this M, you see they're really quite similar. He, you know, my is the kind of word people write over and over again. They're usually not that careful with it, but it's, it's an inscription, so he's taking his time, but it's looking very close to something like this. So once again, I see a very close match. Now this very, to my eye, is extremely close. The E, it's a little less carefully drawn, but the E is quite similar. The V, as in Victor, is very similar. And um, this R, and we talked about in the other video how Neville made his R's two or three different ways. So this is a sort of his standard R. And then sometimes he would make an R more like this with a little tick a little tick here and here there's no tick here the R's in the inscription don't have a tick but they're really quite similar shape and you can see how we just leave out the tick and you've got this shape and I have other examples on the blog of him making R's like this so I think that's a close match as well the Y this Y is a different type but as we've shown he can make the Y both ways this this Y is a little more formal his formal style. So that's also consistent. Now with the word kind, uh, we only have the word kindness that's close. And the K is not as carefully formed, but some of the rest of these are much closer. So this one especially is a very close match and shows the exact same letter formation um, as the top one. This one's a little sloppy, but it's it's the same thing. So the K is consistent. The I N, I mean this this and this, this I N and this I N look very close. The D, this type of D is a very fancy D for Neville. And in the other video we showed you examples of this kind of D. But this letter from 1600 is not a super fancy letter. So you're not going to get a D that quite that um quite that close in this letter but the k and i n are all pretty close now for the and this hairline up here this line up here this neville only does on his super fancy letters so we don't have it here now on the on the previous video i was saying well you know the a's in his inscription are a lot rounder than usual and i think that's true but here's a round a it's almost the same as this one you know, very similar to this and very similar to this. So his handwriting varies and usually his A is going to be more like something like like this. With It's more like an oval, but he does make a very round circular one like this sometimes. So even this one is pretty close. Now these minuscules, they're very small here. That's a little less typical for him um, and this letter doesn't really have that but he doesn't always make an N like that because you have an N he, you have an N here that's not like that so it's not like he, even in the inscription all the N's are written that way this ins, this N happens to be made that way and with the D we talked about before it's the same situation where this is a super formal style for him and this letter isn't super formal so we're not going to see uh, this type of D so overall, comparing this letter with this inscription, certainly it's very close match. It definitely could be made by the same person. Um, it's a much closer match than the vast majority of letters would be. And this is the point I want to make over and over again. Most people are not this close. And I have some control samples on the website. Check those out. But this is a close match. This is a letter written by Henry Neville. This is strong evidence. This is strong reason to take this very, very seriously. Okay, here's a second letter comparison. And this letter is from 1608. 
So it's much closer to the date of this inscription, which is probably around 1609. I mean, almost certainly in 1609. So once again, I mean, just take a little look. It's close. It's close. Now, um, for commendations, the O, the M's are very close. Um, this is commanded with a double N. The D, I mean, it's very close. This is a little more rounded. And this is a little more narrow. But you can see how close it is. This E and this E, once again, it's tilted. But otherwise, it's a very close match. The two is fantastic. I mean, this is a fantastic example. It was a little tilted to the right on the letter, and I sort of tilted, I, I probably rotated it a few degrees to have it line up, but you can see the shape. Everything is very close. And here, just to compare, is a few of his other type of T2s. So he'll make a two like this, too. So there's a lot of variation in the handwriting, but this one looks very similar. Now, they're a little curved on top, but I showed you examples in the other video where he doesn't have them curved. But you can see here the variation, but you can see that this is one of the ways he writes a two. Now, a lot of people never write a two this way. Now, it would be good to do a statistical analysis of how many people who wrote in secretary hand in 1609 ever wrote a two this way. It's difficult to do that kind of research. But, you know, we're lining up on many, many points. The my similar to the one we just looked at, he, you know, very, very reasonably close. Um, certainly could be by the same person. Once again, the very, the Y especially is really close. Loving this Y, very similar style. Um, even the angle of this going down like this is very close to this one. Uh, the R is a little bit different. The E is very similar, except, you know, it's a little bit, Tilted is not closed, but the B is also very similar. So once again, the very is quite similar. This this kind is very close. This kind is very close. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't finish this loop here, and this is not as pronounced, but it's just very very close. Uh, the D shape is also close. Um, this is a little bigger. He doesn't, it's not a super formal letter, so he doesn't curve it down like this is curved down. But this is very consistent handwriting. This could very, very, very good chances at the same person. And the and again, the, these minuscules are a little different, but you can see how he varies it. Here he's making an N like this, and here he's making an N like this. So there's there's variation in this handwriting. This D is super close. It's just he doesn't curve this down. But otherwise, everything about this is close. Though the N is completely different. The shape of the A's, this is a nicely rounded one. Uh, you know, it depends on the letter and what he's doing. So, okay, so now we've looked at two of Henry Neville's letters and compared them with the inscription. What I'd like to do is backtrack a little bit and look at a few of the issues with the inscription that are of a special interest. So... These R's, as I mentioned before, are a little unusual and not really typical of most of Henry Neville's handwriting. But we do have some examples of him making R's that are very similar. So these two examples I took from a draft letter. And if you look at this and compare it with this, they're almost identical. This one is very similar to this one. So... It's really quite a match, and it's very possible that Henry Neville chose consciously to write the inscription with these R's. And if you want to understand what he's doing here, he's really making an R very similar to his italic R, his sort of cursive italic R. So you see how he's written the word February here? And this R is sort of closed, but this one is open and looks like a V. And it's a very similar shape to these other ones here. So I think 
that that would be the explanation of what's going on here. And it's just a stylistic, stylistic decision that he made. Um, and here's a very interesting example. Now, we have the word up here, approved, A-P-P-R-O, that's a U-E-D. And then he's written in a, in a letter around 1608, so almost exactly the same time, he's written the word approve. Now, the A doesn't have the hairline, but it's a very similar shape and is a, a gap here between the A and the P. The P's are really similar. They don't have this sort of super dark descender, but the rest of the shape is very close and um, style is very close. Now, this R and this R, you see this has a little tick here. So usually he would put a tick in his R, but you can see how the R to the O is actually very similar in these two examples. And there's a gap with the next letter in both. So this is really quite similar. Now, the big difference is the spelling. This E is, you know, reasonably similar. Um, but the spelling is different. So this is an O and a V as in Victor. And this is a, a U. So this is a discrepancy in spelling. Now, I've shown in other videos how Henry Neville will vary his spelling, um, you know, interchanging Y for I or using double consonants sometimes and not other times, things like that, and other spelling variations. Even the word Billing Bear, where he lived, he would spell it differently in different contexts. So it's very possible that Henry Neville just made a spelling decision and spelled it differently here. It's also possible that this is not his handwriting, and that's why it's a different spelling. So that is an open question, but these two words are surprisingly similar. It's really surprisingly similar how, how close the handwriting is, except for the spelling. This is really strong evidence, and I hope you'll, you'll look at this carefully. Anyway, thank you for coming by. Uh, this is the video, second video in this series about the sonnets inscription. So if you haven't seen the first one, please go back and watch that. And I hope to give you some more information on this as I get it. And I hope other people will research this. In the end, this is a, a historical factual question of who made this inscription and good historical research will answer it. So... I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I'm providing the information that I have, hoping that other people will use the information they have to help us solve this riddle. But it's a very, very important question in the history of the works of Shakespeare of who wrote this inscription. This is a top, top priority in Shakespeare research. So please go ahead and click like on this and subscribe to the channel and tell your friends.